Dr. Jeffrey Halstead has been Canandaigua's hometown dentist for more than 35 years, offering routine dental care as well as cosmetic dentistry, implants, and dentures by their highly trained and experienced staff. Visit them online at canandaiguadentistry.com or find them on Facebook and Instagram. All right, Mayor, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, let's start with the uh, DRI update or the uh, series of updates, I suppose, there are there for the city. Um, talk to us a little bit about where we stand in the process and what you've been hearing uh, from the community on this front. Well, we've had good uh, community response. Uh, where we are right now is uh, the public um, input session um, part has passed, and we're just uh, putting together... Uh, the, the responses that we've gotten and uh, kind of line that up with uh, where we want to go. Uh, we put out a number of projects um, that uh, business owners, um, mainly downtown, have uh, um, put in requests for for uh, projects that they would move forward um, if the uh, DRI money you know came forward. And they're all um, you know matching. They're not matching, but you know, there's, uh, you know, partnerships with the with the building owners. So it's not 100%, um, you know, from the state. So they do have a stake in the game. Um, and there's a lot of interest in, uh, you know, several, I think there were six or seven uh, building owners downtown that were looking forward to, uh, you know, renovating their second and third floors um, for apartments and other things as, uh, if we got the grant. So it's very positive. Um, community support's been very well, been very good in responses to our survey. Um, and then we had another another round with uh, responses to the what they what they thought of the projects that were that were listed. Um, and kind of a you know one, two, three, if they had to pick three, what uh, what would what would be their picks? And uh, you know, all of them had favorable responses, so there really wasn't one that jumped out ahead of the other. Was there any feedback that stood out to you, whether it was sort of specific or perhaps just uh, themes that developed in the feedback from from the community with regard to what you know what the community wants to see happen downtown? Um, you know, some of the um, you know it was it was all positive. I mean, some of the questions related to you know, transportation to walkability to, um, you know, the, uh, you know, the flavor of the stores, you know, downtown. Um, so that was all very positive. Of course, the one thing that keeps coming up is the, uh, you know, walkability and the five and 20, you know, split through downtown or through, uh, through the, uh, you know, the South end, South main street. So that, you know, that keeps coming up and we've had, different ideas of, you know, what to do with that. And, uh, you know, all are very costly. And um, so we'll see. I mean, it, that ranges from, you know, we call a road diet, which is just, uh, you know, rearranging the intersection a little bit, um, not, uh, not reducing lanes, but just the way that give a little more like an island between the lanes. So if you're walking across, you have a little break um, to, uh, you know, trolley keeps coming up again. Um, some uh, multimodal transportation, you know, between uptown and downtown. Um, you know, that discussion, that idea kept coming up. Um, so we'll see. Uh, you know, then we've had the, hasn't come up lately, but I mean, we've looked into as far as a tunnel, a bridge, you know, pedestrian walkway. We looked into all those things and kind of ruled those out as just, you uh, way too expensive and um, many problems with those if they were to come around. So it's not a, you know, a great solution either way. That sounds like a problem too, that would really extend beyond the scope of, of traditional DRI. It sounds like that would be something that really would require a, a multi-year approach beyond even just the next two, three, four years. Yeah. And that's why, you know, the most um, feasible thing would just be, you know, reworking that area a little bit, nothing major, just um, uh, just rework that area a little bit. So, um, you know, but they want to see what we're doing as far as accessibility, that kind of thing. So 
Sure. Part of it would be what we've what we're looking at, you know, would have to do with bike lane adding bike lanes, um, you know, just make pedestrian traffic safer, bike lanes that aren't there, you know, those kinds of things. And that's what they want to see is that connection between uptown, downtown. What about you? I'm curious, uh, as you look at the list of of potential projects and, and you look at what could potentially happen downtown, um, what stands out for you personally? Like what what do you uh, hope that the downtown achieves through this process uh, more than anything else? Well, I mean, there's some historic buildings downtown. Uh, the one that I really, um, you know, and they're all they're all great. I mean, all the, the building owners that are there, um, the one that we've really been uh, looking to get done is um, uh, the Bemis block, which is probably one of the biggest blocks in the city, multiple stores, and very historic. I mean, the second and third floor, you know, back in the day, uh, I remember my parents talking about um, third floor is a dance, dance hall. It's very ornate, um, very nice. I mean, Frederick, Frederick Douglass spoke there. Then historical figure, figures uh, from, you know, have spoken there. It was really, um, it was really quite the place in the day. And the third floor has been, you know, vacant for years. The second floor has had some offices, um, but I think um, haven't all been occupied uh, very much lately, uh, just because of the repair needed. So, and it, you know, it's a huge building, and I think this will give the owners a way to, uh, you know, help help fund the uh, renovation of that building. It'd be awesome to, to see that renovated. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm curious, you mentioned uh, transportation as kind of like a sub theme that came up in some of the, uh, in some of the feedback from the public. Uh, housing is a theme that we always see sort of connected to downtown enhancement, making communities better. Um, is would this be an opportunity going down the line here, sort of gaming this thing out four or five years uh, for you know, to potentially springboard more investment in housing uh, in the city and around downtown, sort of drawing that circle out? Yeah, you know, and a lot of that, I mean, that's one of the reasons we decided to move forward, really. I mean, it wasn't until not that many weeks ago that we really weren't um, 100% committed to doing a DRI. But the governor's initiatives uh, for housing and, um, and we're a housing, you know, housing community, uh, like a silver or a silver level, which there's very few cities in the state that have that level um, of a pro housing community, which the governor really made a really big point that um, that was going to uh, be a lot of favor in looking up at the DRI. Yeah. Um, so when we found that out and, you know, that's when we decided to, to move forward since we are at that level of uh, pro housing. Um, so all these buildings that are the six or seven that are being proposed, all are second, third floor, you know, apartments, um, housing for downtown. Um, aside from that, that aren't on the um, 10 Chapin Street, which we keep talking about, the old label on building, really not part of the DRI. They've already um, have their plans. Um, there's a public hearing coming up for um, for a pilot that they that the, that they're going to want through the county. Um, so that's that's moving forward. There have been some discussions about the uh, like the South Main Corridor um, from like where Tom's Mobile, where that project's going to be, and that's moving forward from there to the bypass. You know how do you connect? There's various shops there. There's uh, you know mostly houses and uh, you know apartments, two three family apartments. Um, you know how do we tie that? And that's going to be more of a longer term thing to talk about um you know are people willing to give up that property to do uh um you know to do some kind of an investment for you know housing that in there it's already housing there but you know can you do more can you you know get bigger more yeah. property owners to come together to do something so that's going to be a more of a long-term project uh, let's shift gears here a little bit and talk about uh habs something that uh, really sparked, I believe, uh, about a week after our last talk, um, not just Canandaigua Lake, but Seneca Lake, Wasco Lake, uh, essentially every lake in the entire Finger Lake saw uh, like a 10 to 14 day span that was about as bad as anyone has ever seen in the Finger Lakes for confirmed HABs. Um, when when you talk to uh, you know state representatives, when you look to Albany, 
Um, looking ahead to this upcoming session, what are you looking for? What are, are folks uh, like leaders in a city like Canada will looking for uh, out of the state when it comes to uh, the Habs issue, which seems to only be getting worse year after year? Well, a lot of it, you know, there's so many factors that come into why, you know, why there's a, why there's a flare up of these, why, you know, what, you know, a lot of it's, you know, just it could be weather, you know, warm weather this year was uh, a lot warmer, longer than the, than usual. Um, rain, we didn't get a lot of rain, but when we did get a rain, it was, it was heavy. And a lot of the, one of the biggest factors of, um, you know, blooms and things in the lake or what comes off the, what comes off the land. So I think one of the biggest things that we're looking at is, um, you know, monies for uh, mitigation projects, uh, which, um, you know, our watershed authority has been very, very uh, big on, you know, staying ahead of that, being very proactive and looking for properties and looking for places to, um, ways to mitigate what comes into the lake. Um, so those are the things that we look at. We've already had, you know, some monies for, uh, um, boat, you know, boat check stations. And, uh, we have talked about, you know, maybe getting one for the South end. The only one in here now is at the, is at the North end, um, the boat launch in Canandaigua. Uh, but there is more that could probably be done there to see, you know, make sure things aren't coming in from other lakes before they hit Canandaigua Lake. So a lot of it is just, um, you know what can we do to um, keep what's coming off the off the land into the lake? You know and that's working with farmers, working with landowners. Um, uh, you know even as far as how crops are grown and what crops are grown that you know hold the land better than others, and um, you know what they're using on, on their on their properties. So those are all things that uh, you know that you know could help deter some of these situations. That you know the weather. Obviously, you can't do anything about that. So um, what does come in off the land, those are things that we do have um, some control over. As this thing sort of games itself out over the next uh, several years, uh, if conditions don't improve or change or there isn't more investment from the state to sort of come up with game plans to mitigate some of the runoff into the lakes, uh, it, does it seem to you like there will have to be some investment in infrastructure um, to keep drinking water in good shape for communities like Canandaigua? Because that's that's the one concern we hear over at Owasco um, is just that that there's a real concern about the the quality long term of drinking water. And one bad outbreak is sort of the difference maker here between, you know, potable water and water that contains toxins running through uh, running through municipal lines is if is that sort of like the worst case scenario when you think about like what happens in the future if this isn't you know brought under control? Well, yeah, I mean that's one major concern, of course, because there's about seventy thousand people that rely on water from Canada Lake for for drinking water. Uh, we go out to several communities uh, well beyond Canada that count on that water that amount to about seventy thousand residents. Um, so a huge concern, you know. There, um, the other concern obviously is um, you know impact on our economy. Um, besides selling water, which is a huge, you know, part of a uh, huge but a big part of our budget, um, the other is you know with a, a lake that's that's dead or polluted or beyond you know repair or something or getting to that point is um, you know tourism. People aren't gonna, you know that's one of the biggest right, the biggest draw of the Canada was the lake in the summertime, and if that's the case, and you talk about you know the revenue that you'd lose from you know, not having our, you know, the tourism dollars and just not even tourism, that's one point, but, you know, residents, the residents that use this lake for recreation and, um, you know, would be devastating. As far, you know, I think we have maybe in a little better shape um, that Canada was one of the bigger lakes, one of the deeper lakes, and that uh, where we, you know, get our water from, um, we've talked about, taking that inlet pipe down a little bit deeper. Um, but we have every, you know, control, every um, test uh, that can be done with the water coming in the lake, coming into the water treatment plant, as well as when it leaves and 
there's several points around the city where it's checked, you know, every day as well. Um, and so as far as monitoring things and, and what we, you know, the way that we treat the water, we treat it very little because it's pretty uh, clean coming right out of the lake. Um, but all those measures are in place to treat the water, you know, as it comes in and to test it. And like I said, our intakes are, you know, down deep enough that, um, you know, if there is an issue, we've, we've talked about in the past anyway, to, uh, a little bit to, you know, take it down a little bit deeper, but obviously something we definitely keep ahead of. Yeah. Uh, and my last question here for you, uh, as we look forward into the rest of October and November, uh, what's on your radar that's going to be coming up before uh, city council here? Budget, budget, budget. Um, we've already started, like I think mentioned before, a little bit ahead of time. Um, last week we had the, the not-for-profits come in that, uh, you know, um, city funds or helps fund uh, a little bit. And, so they came in and, uh, you know, um, pitched their cause. And then uh, starting right November 1st, we have meetings every week, so twice a week. So the whole month of November is pretty much uh, is budget. Um, like I said, you know, where we normally have a finance or ordinance or something like that, they're all going to be, you know, budget twice a week for the, for the month of November. So that's going to be the big, uh, that'll be it for about for the next month. And hopefully, uh, you know, by December 1st or, you know, we'll have a budget that we can, that we'll be able to pass. Uh, you know, this may be a tough one this year. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of increases, um, you know, just a lot, you know, the mandates, the mandates, the thing that we, the things that we don't have any control of have gone up significantly. And then, uh, you know, I always tell people we're running a business and that, uh, you know, it's like every household, every business, things are going up. And as we run our business of the city, you know, prices go up, things go up and we need to, uh, you know, keep up with that. So, but we do the best that we can uh, do for the residents, but still have a, you know, a safe community and uh, still provide the services that we provide and that we do more than a lot of communities do with our garbage pickup and some other things that, uh, um, you know, hopefully uh, make that blend of keeping our services up as well as uh, not uh, rocking the boat too much with residents. All right, Mayor, we will uh, talk more about this next month. Until then, uh, have a good one and uh, best of luck with everything up there. All right. Thank you. You as well. Thanks for watching and listening to this episode of Inside the FLX. Check the show notes for links to everything we discussed today. And remember, new episodes of the show drop every Monday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and the iHeartRadio app. If you have a question or a suggestion for a future episode, email news at fingerlakes1.com and download the fingerlakes1.com app for the latest breaking news. For the entire team here, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.